All right, so I'm gonna give you the content framework that will 10X your content so you can get more leads, so you can get more business, so you can drive more revenue at the end of the day. So a lot of people talk about how it's really important to produce more content. You have the Gary V's of the world, you gotta produce content. It's more about quantity versus quality. And that sounds good, but how do you actually do it? And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a framework that is what works for us and what we're constantly iterating on because I have gone through the pain of trying to figure out how to actually make Make it work because when you have people out there that are pumping out 50 to 75 to 100 pieces of content per day across platforms you have to wonder to yourself how are they doing it from a cost effective standpoint because not all of us can afford 30 40 50 full-time people on our content team which is how gary has his team set up and what basically works for him is his team will put a pillar piece of content into a chat group and then everyone else will just come in and start chopping it up and start posting it to native platforms and that's how it works for them and when i'm talking about pillar content if we take a look at the graphic over here. Pillar content just means the main piece of content that you're producing. And so when I think about our content, well, I put out my two podcasts. I have my YouTube channel. Sometimes I'm speaking at conferences. Sometimes I'm being interviewed somewhere on another podcast. That's plenty of content to pull from. And so the mistake that I've made over time was having to continually try to reinvent the wheel and think of new content every single day. And so you can imagine every single day comes up, new day starts, and in the morning, I'm having to sit through and think through brand new content ideas or concepts. And that can be exhausting. Or if I have to take the time to go post to each individual channel, that's very exhausting too. And if you're watching this and let's say you're a founder, you might not have the time to do this in the very beginning. You might need to focus on the business first and driving a lot of value from that, unless your business is the content. That's a completely different story. And so what I would say is for the vast majority of people, you got to focus on the business first. You got to drive real product market fit. You got to drive real value in the marketplace before you start focusing on content because the content piece, that puzzle gets complex over time. And so when I look at ours for the ad agency I have called Single Grain, we start with longer form content. And so that means podcast, speaking, interviews. So I have my podcast. There's sometimes I'm speaking around the world. And then what happens once you have this pillar piece of content over here is you will move it over to a main platform. And so for us, that might be tweets, threads, and video tweets, okay? So what that means is you can take a podcast, you can run it through a chat GPT, for example, or a Google bar, and you can have it be repurposed for a tweet. And then you can make it into a thread if you want. It's more native. You might have one idea from a podcast, speaking, or interviews. And the whole idea is you toss it up there. And then you do video tweets that basically means you might take a clip or you might take the entire interview itself and just throw it up on Twitter. And this is you continuing to sprout your content. So it starts over here, you're seeding it over here, then you're sprouting it over here, and then you're moving it over to secondary platforms. So now I can take this tweet and I can make it an image and just post it to Instagram, or I can take the thread and make it into a carousel. The video tweets, they can move directly over into reels. So you have short form, TikTok, Instagram reels, you have Facebook reels. And I would just recommend using a tool to schedule all of these. We pay for Sprout Social because it has good reporting and that's what we do. And then I would say this video tweet over here can move over to long form. And I'm just trying to simplify it. Just because this is what works for us doesn't mean this is how you need to do it exactly. Ultimately, you need to be thinking about a framework. You might need to rejigger some of these things over here. And maybe your pillar piece of content is a blog post. Maybe your pillar piece of content is your newsletter or it could be something else. By the way, before I continue, I would just say check out our newsletter. We'll drop it in the comments below. We have a newsletter called Leveling Up and this is where we share the latest on marketing, the latest on business and we just keep you updated so you can grow your business faster. As we continue to look down at this, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and it comes from one piece over here. And it could actually be a lot more. Maybe you might have multiple visuals from one tweet and the video over here might be chopped up into, let's say five or six takeaways from it. So six takeaways, one, two, three, four, that's six times four is 24 over here. And you might chop up some of these five minute clips from this video over here and post them. And then you might post them up on LinkedIn and then you'll drop some of this stuff into a newsletter to you curate the content you put on the newsletter. And I highly recommend everyone focuses on growing a newsletter right now because you look at a lot of great newsletter businesses out there. Business Insider bought Morning Brew. The Hustle was purchased by HubSpot, which is a multi-billion dollar publicly traded company. And so my point of saying all this is that when you control first party data in a newsletter, you basically have data around their name, their email, maybe around the revenue, the type of business that they're in, the title that they have. You have a lot more power and there's a lot more that you can do with it. If you have a newsletter, you're going to be promoting your products, your your services. Potentially you can promote other stuff if you want, but you're going to get the highest margin there. And you can also control the quality of the experience, the quality of the service that you might have. And ultimately you're going to be able to increase your lifetime values, collect the most revenues at the end of the day. And so that's why I put at the bottom over here. It's certainly last, but it's not least. You're just looking to milk the organic reach from these platforms over here. And just because I mentioned these platforms in this video right now, maybe by the time you watch it, some of the organic reach on these platforms might not be as good, but there will be other platforms that sprout up and that's on you to figure out the meta 
meta game for each platform, how each platform, its users prefer posts to be shown. And you can make a strategic decision on what you want to cut and what you want to keep and what you want to double down on. And then I would just encourage you when you start doing this, you're doing this yourself initially, documenting it using a software like Loom, where you can capture the screen share. And then eventually you start to hand it off. You have all this documentation and you basically define what success looks like for each platform. And then you have people do it. And that's what it is at the end of the day. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think and we'll see you later.